moms to be able to make a great meal quickly that's delicious. Now you can be a grandmom too, that's fine. Sometimes you just want to relax for a bit and have a, a wonderful meal that's, that's made easily that tastes delicious. So that's what we're going to start off with. Hey everyone, I'm Vishon, the Tough Mama. Hey everyone, my name is Chef Claudia. Well, we're back and we wanted to share about our cooking show and give you a recap of what happened. So basically, uh, Chef Claudia and I, we had a cooking show at our, our local news station, KY3. They put on a show, a women's show, and that was on February 17th. And we were invited to you know show some of our different recipes and do them on stage in a stage kitchen. And I have to say, it was the first time for me to ever do anything like that. I was honored to get the chance to do it. And we just wanted to share a little bit about what we prepared, our experiences, and maybe a few laughs too. So I hope you enjoy uh, this episode. So Chef, you want to talk a little bit about your experience? What did you think? Yeah, so it was, it was pretty, um, it was awesome. <laughs> that was, that's like how I can break it down. It was really cool how I got the chance to do that upstate, uh, on stage, excuse me. Um, and you were also doing the same thing, but we both, it was both of our first time up there yeah, yeah. in front of all of those people. And it was a little bit intimidating, but I feel like once I got into my element, um, mm -hmm. it just kind of felt better. I still, I was still nervous. And when I get nervous, I kind of stutter my words a little bit, but it's okay. We, we're all still learning and I would be honored to do that again. That was really fun. And not only going up on stage, but working with you at the booth, that was really fun. I, I, I got you. <laughs> I, I had a lot of fun working with everybody that was there that day and, and selling the salts and just learning a lot more about salt in general because yeah. it's a lot to learn. And, you know, even the most experienced chef, you know, probably can still have something to learn from from what you have to offer your knowledge is is amazing so, uh, she, yeah. she's amazing so, <laughs> so I have to brag a little bit about <laughs> chef Claudia so she goes up there okay and there's like uh, chairs all set out in front of the stage and I think it can hold about a hundred people in front of the stage but there's all these people walking by too because it was a, a vendor event so there was lots of different vendors and booths everything from food to fashion to home improvement and things like that so they could have had as many as 5,000 people it's hard to tell because it was just a constant flow so I went foot first and did my cooking show and I probably had a handful of people in the audience chef Claudia got up there and she starts cooking and I'll tell, have her tell you what she prepared but she starts cooking and the smell is just fantastic and all of a sudden, like, all of these people just started flowing in and sitting down to, to watch her prepare her, her recipes. And it was, it was so cool to watch just to see her be the professional that she is and just draw this crowd in. I think everybody was salivating. They wanted to try her recipes, like, right then. But we weren't allowed to give out samples because of the food health requirements, which I understand that. Uh, but I'm really glad that, that you did such a great job. Thank you. I truly appreciate it. That means a lot. And it was an honor. Um, people were coming up to me at the booth looking for me specifically and asking me where my restaurant is. Oh, I yeah. currently have a restaurant. I'm working on that and doing everything that I need to do. But um, that's one of my long-term goals. Um, what I prepared on the stage, though, was chicken fajita tacos. And I did pico de gallo, and I did tortilla chips. I had already made the tortilla chips um, prior to getting to the show, but um, I did. I sh demonstrated how to get everything done quickly. Um, mm -hmm. The biggest challenge is cooking the chicken, like I was saying on stage, is getting that chicken up to temp and making sure that your vegetables don't get completely soggy. Um, but even mm -hmm. if they did, it's not a big deal. Even if they get charred, it's really mm -hmm. not a big deal because of the, um, I like charred onions mm -hmm. and I like charred red, uh, bell peppers or okay. just bell peppers in general, excuse me. Um, so if you kind of burn those, it's, 
It tastes it's not even that bad. Like grilled. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, it really does. Um, unless it's completely scorched in them. But, <laughs> you know, it takes a while to get there. But um, the chicken is just make sure you don't undercook it. And then what temperature should chicken be? It should be at 165. I temp just by visually looking at it. I look at it. Okay, so when I'm cooking the chicken, mm -hmm. I see little rims of white mm -hmm. just coming off the edge of the chicken. Right. And then that kind of get it's an indicator for me um, to to make sure I'm about to flip it. Oh, I and see. that's when it's usually pretty perfect when it's you see it coming above. You, do you see you right know, like the, the outside the edge outside of, of the yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's my indicator of it's flip time. I'll look at it underneath it, and if it's not. Um, golden brown mm -hmm. it probably means my temperature wasn't too wasn't mm -hmm. high enough or just slightly so sure. just flip it and then cook that side and then if you need to like get a little bit more brown flip it again but I usually tend to sure. just just play with play with what I got you know so um, for those of us that are not trained professionals on the home chef I use a thermometer. I have a, um, a meat thermometer and I highly recommend that you have that. It's a great way to keep your food safe and food safety is super important. If you've ever had food poisoning, you know, it's super important. And so you want to, you know, stick that in, into the chicken and make sure that it's to the temperature that she said, 145? 165. 165, uh, 165 Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. If, Fahrenheit, you're, if yes. you're out of the U.S., it's Fahrenheit that we're talking about. Yes. Um, so, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but go oh, ahead. Oh, no, you're okay. Um, so yeah, that's what I demonstrated on stage. Um, the pico de gallo um, was fairly simple. You add all of your ingredients in a bowl, you mix it all up, mm -hmm. and then you taste, um, you add just your seasonings Perfect. if you need to. So it's fairly simple and kids can help out. They love doing it. My kid likes to mix things, so that's a way to help them get involved in the kitchen for sure. Perfect. But other than my experience, how is yours? Sure, I want to share, but I think we should cut to the video footage that okay. we have of you cooking. So okay. let's cut to that and you yeah. all can watch how or the cooking show as it was prepared on stage. And after that, then we'll cut back here to me. Sounds good. Today I am here to show you how to make some chicken fajita tacos as well as some pico de gallo. And if I have an extra time, I will show you how to um, make some tortilla chips as well for your pico de gallo, okay? So I hope you guys are ready. Let's get this show started. Um, I do like to cook my chicken with, oh, give me just a second. I did forget the chicken part. <laughs> the most important part, huh? Alrighty, we're here. So I do like to cook my chicken um, in butter. I just find that, that it gives it more of that juicy taste. It doesn't dry it out, so no fear. All you need to do is get some, get about a pound of chicken. Let me remove that here. So we want about a pound of your chicken and about two, three tablespoons of your butter. If you want to go crazier, you can put half a stick of butter in there, but that's a little too much. <laughs> Alrighty. And I'm going to just let that heat up a little bit here. Alrighty. Do you guys like to cook with chicken? Yeah, so uh, the way I season my chicken here, let me put that right there. I like to add lemon pepper chicken to my, um, lemon pepper seasoning to my chicken. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I also like to add onion powder. My recipe card should be out there somewhere. Um, I believe it should be handed to you guys here shortly or maybe after the segment. I add Tough Mama's Sidacha salt, which is this guy here. It pairs really good with chicken. Um, I like it because of the spiciness. You don't have to use it. You can 
use a different salt, but I would definitely recommend trying our Salt Mama brand back there if you get a chance. We do have a tasting booth if you haven't heard that already. I also like to add the jalapeno lime salt to it. It just gives it a little bit more of that oomph. <laughs> and then garlic powder. I'm not sure if I said onion powder as well, but I do add some of that. Okay, so we're all good with the, with the seasoning there. I'm gonna go ahead and add your chicken. If it doesn't hold on. There we go. Alrighty. Just give it a good swirl there. Awesome. You guys having fun? Yeah? I'm glad. Alrighty. So we're gonna let that chicken heat up about medium, medium high heat there. You always wanna make sure your chicken is cooked fully, thoroughly, up until 165 temp. The way I look at it is, the way I taught my husband, is I look at the sides of the chicken. I, I don't have to temp it because I just know based off the look of it. On the sides of the chicken, it will start turning a little bit white. And on the bottom, it starts to turn a little bit golden. So then you want to flip it once it reaches to that, okay? But if you're, if you're doubting yourself, please go ahead and tap that. Just make sure it's at 165. Yes, <laughs> don't give raw meat to anyone. <laughs> Alrighty, so we'll let that go for a little bit there. I'm gonna also demonstrate how to make some pico de gallo. Um, we're gonna start off by having five Roma tomatoes. My family cooks with Roma tomatoes, but you can choose any tomatoes you like. So we dice those up. We also have, um, we also have our onions. I use about one onion. Um, it just depends on the size. An onion and a half will do as well. My family likes things spicy, so if you wanna try adding some jalapenos, you can add some jalapenos in there. About three is what I like to use. And then we have some cilantro. And we also have your lime juice. Um, I use about four, four to five. It just depends. I like to get the medium size, not the teeny ones, not the really large ones either. So kind of go based off what you feel there. So the lime juice, and then we have your paprika. And then we also have a tough mama's jalapeno salt, which is this guy here. We also have the onion powder. We have some garlic powder, some red chili flakes, regular pepper, and then we have some tahin, which is this guy here. If you're not familiar with it, I would totally recommend it. Okay, so we all, we just add all of those items into a bowl and you mix, you taste and add just your seasonings as you want. So let's go ahead and mix it up here. It's really good to get the kiddos to join in with you as well if you have someone to help. <laughs> My two-year-old or three-year-old, he likes to come in and help a lot. So this is a task anybody can do. And literally you just pour everything all together. and have them stir it up, go crazy on it. Do you guys have any kiddos? Yeah? Do they like to help with cooking dinner? Help, right? <laughs> this is a good way to get them encouraged and teach them a little bit about seasonings and how everything works, you know? If you don't like it spicy, you can totally eliminate the jalapenos. You can totally eliminate the red pepper flakes. Um, I would still, I would still use the jalapeno lime salt though. It is really good. It's very mild. It's not too spicy. But if you are, if you're hesitant, go ahead and try it at the Salt Mama uh, bar, and we will definitely help you out there. Okay. 
I do want to show you my, um, I make some tortilla chips from home. So what I do is just, I grab about 10 to 20 tortillas, medium size, not too small, not too big. And you want them to be corn. So you would cut them in half and then half again. You can totally stop there, but you can also cut one more time. Um, and then you'll, you'll get a larger amount of tortilla chips that comes out, okay? We can do that here in just a sec. Let me check on my chicken. It smells good. You can make these chicken fajita tacos into burritos as well. So what you would do is just get a big uh, tortilla, a flour tortilla, and then you would just roll it up in that. If you know how to roll burritos, um, it's actually fairly simple. Just kind of put in your items. Can you guys see anything from there? Yeah? You just put in your items here, right? Fold it over, tuck your corners like this, and then roll, right? It's, it's a, it's not cooked right now, but that's kind of the demonstration for it. I wish I would have brought some tortillas for you guys to try um, or see how that one works. Um, yeah, you can totally get the kiddos to try even rolling those as well, if that's something you want to do. Alrighty. Okay, let's go ahead and do this here. I'm going to, I should have just heated this one up. So that's good. You can also either cook your chicken separately or cook it together. I should have just put it together because it just gives it that better flavor. But I do want to demonstrate a little bit on how to cut. If you don't know how to cut in julienne sizes, this is what it looks like here. Um, and I usually use red bell pepper, green bell pepper, yellow, orange, green, and red. Um, you can do just green. It just depends on how you like it. I like the colorfulness to them. Also, you can take this, these out once they're done and then start cooking your vegetables. I'm just going to, for the sake of the show, I'm just going to throw them in there. You don't want them to be completely soggy and you don't want them to be completely crunchy either. So it just, it just depends on um, how you time it. I also like to add in, so you see how that's still a little bit pink there? I usually would put a lid over it, along with my onions before I forget. <laughs> All right. And I'll usually just let it sit there until it's pretty much ready. And it will, it will get to the um, temp that you want. Also, it will get the, the vegetables to be as tender, but also have a little bit of that crunch. Your, your onions will be, I like my onions completely, um, you know, sauteed. So that's my preference. Not everybody likes it that way, but that's just for a preference. Um, so now for the pico, I'm going to let that just sit there for a little while. So this is how our pico looks so far. I'm going to add the lemon juice here. For the sake of the show, I did remove the pulp from the tomato because it does add a lot of liquid to your, to your pico. I personally like that a lot better. I just didn't want it to get soggy for us here. Um, but it's way better a day after you leave it sitting in the refrigerator. Just keep it airtight if you can. Um, otherwise, it, the tomatoes and stuff will dry out a little bit. Um, just the top layer, at least. 
I want to give this a bite already. But. <laughs> and then you add your cilantro. Alrighty. And like I said, you want to pair this either on top of your taco or you can do it with your um, tortilla chips as well, okay? So it's fairly simple. It does not take very long at all. The longest that you're probably gonna do, take on is your vegetables and your chicken up to 10, but that's about it. Your tortilla chips, if you do wanna get, get into making your own tortilla chips. In a very shallow pan, kinda like this one. Let me remove this. So in a very shallow pan, you just wanna get about an inch or two of oil. Get it, um, go medium. Medium heat works best for me. It's even on any um, other different stoves that I've used. I find that medium heat does work best. Um, just use your regular vegetable oil. And like I said, cut your tortilla chips. Once your, once your oil is up to temp, go ahead and start placing in your tortilla chips. I try with just one to start just to see if, it, if it's up to temp, okay? Um, and then once they start turning golden brown, I take them out a little bit before they get to that darker color. Just because once they get removed out of the pan, they will still keep cooking with that oil that's on them. I also like to add floor de sel, which we have at the Mama booth, and I forgot to bring one as well. But I do like to add that on top. It's not, it's a finishing salt, so you don't want to cook with that one, okay? Um, but other than that, your tortilla chips are ready to go. And I have them right here for you. If I can get it out here. Ooh, there we go. All right, can you guys see? So you want, it's going to come out various different colors. You see this one's a little bit too dark. I kind of did that for demonstration purposes. You want it to get, you want it to get like so. Can you guys see very good? Yeah? Okay. And like I said, add your finishing salt on top of it. It's going to taste so good with your pico de gallo. I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning. It looks like it needs a little bit more. And that's going to be your jalapeno lime salt from Tough Mama, as well as your sriracha. I do like things spicy. Do you guys like spicy? No? Not so much? Some of you? <laughs> it's okay. With that lemon pepper seasoning, it will give it that really good, um, juicy taste as well. And I'm just gonna let that do its thing. Okay. I like to top my tacos off with my pico. It just tastes phenomenal. Um, you can do this with a lot of different things. My my son likes to literally. That's literally what he does. I could give him this whole bowl and he'll eat it. So, <laughs> and I can too, don't get me wrong, but I don't know about all that. Um, this is what it's gonna look like once it's done. I like to shred my meat, my chicken, once it's done. That way it's easier to put in your, in your taco here. I'm gonna do one just for demonstration purposes. Grab some of these just to show you. There we go. And then we're gonna keep going. Okay. These gloves don't fit me. Okay. 
And here you have your taco. It's going. You see? It's not hard at all. And it's super flavorful. I wish you guys can get a taste of it. There it goes. Get that out of the way. I do recommend you shredding your chicken though, because otherwise it's just gonna be this big old thing. <laughs> you can chop it up or however you want to do it, but the kids love it. Your husband will love it. Your lovers, whatever it is <laughs> you have. <laughs> but yes, definitely give it a try, and I hope you do. If you do, leave us a, a message on our YouTube or social media at Tough Mama Salts if you get a chance. And also, I do recommend going over there and trying our salt for you. All right? I believe that was everything. Just make sure, like I said, your chicken is up to 10. And that's your most important part of this, okay? I hope you try at least the tortilla chips, if not the pico de gallo. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. So now that we talked about all of my stuff, Let's talk a little bit about your experience and how that went for you. Sure. So I have to share this with you because I, you know, if you've never cooked on a, a stage, like a stage kitchen, which I had not, everything on the stage other than the stovetop and the oven are non-functioning. So like none of the drawers open, none of the cabinets open of the, the cabinetry. Even in the back, there was a sink that was there. It, there was no water. No. <laughs> it, 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 it's not hooked up to anything. Uh, there's no utensil. You have to bring literally every single thing that you're going to prepare. You have to bring it with you, which was a new experience for us. But yeah. Hey, we, we rocked yeah. it out. We, we figured it, it out. Yeah. And sorry for interrupting, no, go ahead. but I, it just made me laugh because in the beginning of my segment, um, I forgot to unwrap my chicken it was still in the fridge right, yeah. when i started it i'm like good thing the fridge was not right next to me yeah, the fridge worked though <laughs> yeah the fridge worked thankfully um but my chicken i left it in there and then i left my tortilla chips i forgot to unwrap them just so i didn't make all that noise and oh, rattling you right. know while we had the head piece on and everything but that part was funny. I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? I got, <laughs> I, from that moment on, I got so embarrassed and I feel like I was kind of messing up my, my wording there. And, you were, you look great. It was, it was funny. No, it was, it was really an honor to, to get all that feedback from you guys. Thank you. Yeah. That feedback from everyone. Thank you for, for coming up to me and asking where my restaurant is. I look forward to bringing that for you soon yeah, yeah. but sorry for yeah. interrupting this, but, yeah. uh, yeah, that's great yeah. but I do I do have to say too that was the other part of it not only did you have an audience out there but there also was a camera that was aimed down at the area where you're working so on the the range and then there was some of the countertop that was displayed and then uh, in front of the stage there was a big television so they could see this big screen they could see everything that you're doing in front of you uh, so so that was pretty cool. So what I made was I made a, a sheep pan pork recipe uh, using our smoked applewood salt, which is smoked over aged applewood. And that it's a simple recipe really that's just on one like cookie sheet pan. And it's got uh, roasted baby potatoes, fresh green beans, and then a pork tenderloin down the middle. Uh, and you can mix everything up like the marinade and the rub just in like gallon Ziploc bags and throw you know throw your meat into that and then just kind of shake it up and it gets it's perfect so you don't have dishes afterwards other than the sheet pan uh and it went pretty good but like like chef claudia i didn't take the tenderloin out of the wrapper beforehand so i'm over by the sink the non-working sink and i'm cutting in to take the to take it out and then i wanted to kind of <laughs> wash my i had gloves we both of course wear gloves when you're cooking for professionally and you can wash the gloves off. So, and I know now why they won't allow samples because, you know, here I am handling the meat, handling the vegetables with the same hands that handled the meat or glove hands yeah. and everything. And so it was kind of funny. Cross contamination. Yeah, to the <laughs> definitely cross contamination. You don't want to do that in, oh, in no, order no. to, you know, have good hygiene mm -hmm. for cooking. And you know, that's why a lot of people get sick like at holidays because yeah. they don't yeah. know about that. Yeah. Like they touch the turkey and then they, like for Thanksgiving and then yeah. they touch this and they touch that and then it contaminates yeah. everything. Yeah. People do leave their turkeys out. Mm hmm during the holidays and that bacteria starts developing mm -hmm. and that's what hurts our stomachs and gets us mm -hmm. 
makes them really sick. So just be mindful not to leave your turkey out. Right. If you're going to thaw it out, I would do it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. um, do it early, a couple days. I would yeah. say like four days before. Um, yeah, I always try to defrost in the fridge. The only exception is like you can defrost in a microwave, you know, like from frozen and then obviously use it right away or refrigerate it. And you can also defrost in water, but it has to be fully submerged, cool water, mm -hmm. and it can only be in there for, for so long. Mm -hmm. So these are some, some tips that I've learned just from taking, you know, my food handling course and everything mm -hmm. else. Um, that zone that you just saw that popped up, that tells you the safe zone. So, you know, you want your food within that temperature range. Um, if it's outside of that range, then that's where the contamination can happen as far as bacteria multiplying so fast that um, you can't even cook it out. Like a lot of people are like, oh, my, you know, my steak sat out on the counter for, you know, all day while I was at work. Uh, well, the bacteria that's in there, even though you're going to cook it right away, it doesn't kill at all. Mm -hmm. And so there's a potential there for foodborne illness, which if you've ever been sick, not fun. Yeah. Not fun. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was going to talk about what I did. So why don't we just cut to the show and you can see the things that, that I demonstrated on at the cooking show. So here it is. All right. Anyhow, my name is Vishon. That's my first name. And like everybody says, they call me the Tough Mama. My business is Tough Mama Salt. And today we're going to start off with a quick sheet pan recipe. Is anybody familiar with sheet pan recipes? Have you, oh, you're right. So a sheet pan recipe is a one pan meal that you can make on one pan, right? That's kind of the goal. You don't want to have a bunch of dirty dishes when you're done. You want to have some things that, that's delicious and easy. And that's what we're going to do. So here's what we're making. We, I have recipe cards for everybody. And we'll hand those out after. So we're going to be making smoked, with smoked apple salt, it's called a smoked apple sheet pan pork. So let's get started. <laughs> All right. So number one, I said you only need one pan. I'm going to scoot over here. We only need one pan. You might want some tongs. And then for the purpose of our display today, I'm going to put on some gloves so it's official. <laughs> Right? All right. And here's something else you're going to want. You're going to want three of these. Just gallon Ziploc bags. Makes it easy that way you, you don't have to dirty up any dishes. All right. So we're going to start off with what you put together to marinate your pork and to do the rub for the pork. And the other thing you need, I should bring that out. <laughs> You're gonna need some green beans. I, I'm making one for like a, a couple, for two people. I would double the green beans. This is a little more than a half pound. I would double that if you're gonna do a family of four or more. And then the other thing that you need are some baby potatoes. I have already cut them in half so that they'll cook easier with the baby potatoes. I love the multicolor ones. I got the purple, the red, and the Yukon yellow. They really add a good flavor. So you're going to need those. And then you'll need a pork tenderloin. Okay. Uh, for this one, I just I just picked this one up at um, a big box store, to be unnamed. Uh, but you can, you can pick these up. And this is a, a pork tenderloin. It's all natural. These usually have two tenderloins in it. For the purpose of today, I only will be using one half of this. Uh, but if you have a bigger family, go ahead and do two. I would go for that, okay? So here's what you're gonna do first. You're gonna take one of your Ziplocs, open that guy up. We're just gonna kind of set him like that for now. And then over here, I've got one teaspoon of mustard powder. I'm going to take that. I've already pre-measured to make this easy. And this is something, if you're a busy mom, you can prep all this on a Sunday night or whatever night you have free. Put it in the bag so it's ready to go. 
And then you can even put your pork in there and put it in the fridge so that on a busy weeknight, if you've got kids that are in athletics or something like that, you already have it ready to go. So we've got the mustard. We're gonna add a, a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne just to give it a little pop. If you're not big on spice, you can omit that one, but I love my spice. All right, moving on, we also have a teaspoon of paprika. I like the smoke paprika. I think it adds a, a really good flavor to it. I'm sorry, that was a tablespoon, not a teaspoon. A tablespoon of paprika. You're like, that's a lot. Tablespoon. All right, then we come over here. I've just got some ground pepper. I've got a half teaspoon of the ground pepper, black pepper. Moving on. I know it's a lot for the rub, but it's so worth it. And we've got some onion powder, and I've got a half a teaspoon of that. I'll save that for last because that's special. All right, we've got some, uh, um, I have some other stuff that goes over here. The, here's the secret. You want to have some brown sugar. I've got two tablespoons of brown sugar. That's going to caramelize on your pork tenderloin. It's so delicious. And over here is a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. You guys with me so far? We're going to hand out the recipes. All right, so you're like, well, wait a minute, there was a secret. There is. Everything that we do, we use Tough Mama salt, because that's what we do, right? So the salt that I recommend for pork is our smoked apple salt. Smoked apple salt is smoked over aged apple wood for several days. We actually smoke this ourselves in a professional smoker. Absolutely delicious. It makes it taste like you smoked your pork tenderloin, even though it's a sheet pan meal. You don't need to break out the smoker for this one. So that's the salt that we use, and I already have measured it out. And this is one and a half teaspoons of smoked apple salt. All right, I'm just gonna kind of crunch that up in there a little bit. Easy, right? We're making it as easy as we can. My hands aren't even dirty yet. All right, there we go. Now, I need to make this into more of a paste. I just have some olive oil. You could use hot butter. I prefer the olive oil. I've also done avocado oil and that works really well. And I'm just gonna eyeball it, but it's about three tablespoons. And again, we're just mashing it around in there, give it a nice paste. Oh, that looks good. I don't know if you can see through the camera, but you want it to be kind of about the texture of wet sand. That's going to give you the best rub. <laughs> All right, I think that's good. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and break open our pork tenderloin. I'm going to head over to the sink to do this part. <laughs> so I've got a pork tenderloin here. I, there are two in the pack. I'm just going to do one, like I said earlier, just because of the interest of time today. But we're just going to throw that into our rub. And I can rub it with the hands, but in this case, I'm just gonna keep it in the bag. Try not to get my hands too messy. I can zip that up and do like the old shake and bakes. I don't know if people still do that anymore. <laughs> are you guys having fun? You guys like to cook? Okay, I wanna make sure you guys are engaged, having a good time. I mean, food, it's food. How many of you are foodies? Anybody a foodie? Yes. What's the most unusual food that you've ever eaten? I can tell you mine if you don't have one. What, what did you eat? A octopus, did you like it? <laughs> I've had it too, I wasn't a fan. <laughs> it sucked to my tongue? Yeah, she said octopus. Um, the most unusual one I had was um, cow brains. And I didn't know I was eating it. It was really good until they told me what it was. And I was like, eh, it wasn't my thing. But some people love that. Try new things, you never know. You might find something you love.
So I've been massaging this. I, I know it's hilarious. I'm up here rubbing this. But um, but we got this all set to go. It's all rubbed. I'm gonna set this over to the side because now we're gonna do our veggies. So for our veggies, it's super simple. Again, a little bag. Open that up. Okay. There we go. And now for the veggies, I only have four ingredients. Let's bring these over here. Okay, so I have some minced garlic. And I'm just gonna use about a half because I have two veggies and you'll see why I wanna split it up in a second. But I'm gonna use half of that in this bag. And then I, I have some melted butter and I've got four tablespoons in here, but I'm just gonna use a half of that, so two tablespoons there. And then I've got some uh, ground, fresh ground pepper. And I went ahead and added a secret ingredient again. We have a French garden salt by Tough Mama. This is rosemary, lemon, and garlic. Oh, she likes that one. It is a good one, isn't it? It's, it is so good on roasted vegetables. So I, instead of regular salt with my black pepper, I added a teaspoon of this salt, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put half of that in there. And then finally, I've got some chives and I cheated. I used the freeze dried kind, but I will say it's way better if you get the fresh chives. But hey, we're on a cooking show, we're doing what we can. So we've got the freeze dried, I'm gonna put half of that in there. And that was, um, in case you were wondering, that was about two tablespoons of the chives. All right, so we've got that in there. Now I'm gonna take my green beans, and this is, if you have little ones or grandkids or uh, little kids, green beans are a great activity that they can help you with while you're getting all your other stuff together. I remember with my, in my family, I would sit down on the floor when I was about three and my grandmother would give me a big bowl of beans from the garden and I'd be breaking the stems off and snapping them. And then, of course, you want to wash them after your child has done that. So wash it really good in a, in a colander. And it's just a great activity to keep them occupied while you're making the meals. So I'm going to take my beans and I'm going to put them in here. Okay, and the same thing we do with the pork. Just shake it around, get all those beans with that beautiful seasoning on there. Perfect. Don't you like easy recipes? Okay, good. So I've got those already, and I'm gonna go ahead and take these, and here's, here's how you wanna lay it out on your pan. You wanna put your beans right down the middle of your pan. So all of the things we're doing here are going in one pan, because this is a sheet pan recipe. And here's what's cool, you don't even really need to grease your pan for this, because we've used butter and olive oil, so everything's gonna stay unstuck to your pan. I'm trying to lay them all kind of horizontally on the camera, or vertically to me. There we go. That look nice already, that bright green. All right, and I'm actually gonna use the same bag. We don't even need to mess up another one because I'm gonna put the same ingredients in here for our potatoes. So I'm gonna dump the rest of the chives. I've got my black pepper and my French garden salt. And now we've got our olive or fresh butter, fresh butter, melted butter. And then finally, our garlic. Can't have too much garlic, I love garlic. Okay, so all that's in there. And now we're gonna do the same thing with our potatoes. And I probably could've just dumped it in there with the mixed potatoes. All right. Potatoes, get them all covered in that beautiful, beautiful garlic and chives and butter. Very easy, right? My hands still aren't messy. All right, from here, I'm gonna start organizing my potatoes. So you just place them in here, face down. So I've cut all these already. 
you're gonna see how this just comes together and it looks so beautiful. All the different colors. And this is another activity. If you wanted to have a, an older child help you out, they can arrange this on there for you so you can get your family involved. You're gonna find for our cooking show that I've got my family involved. Later on, my son Jack is gonna come up here and show you one of his recipes that he made himself. And he would not have enjoyed cooking as much, I don't think, if I wouldn't have encouraged him to cook with me when he was a small child. All right, these are looking really pretty. It's already looking pretty, and I haven't even added the, the pork. Try to get some different colors in here. I'm probably not gonna use all the potatoes today because I brought a smaller pan. Okay, and that looks so pretty like that already. All right, so here's the easy part. You literally just take your pork that's already got all this wonderful marinade on it and rub and I'm gonna lay him across here just like that kind of spread some of that rub on there mm -hmm. when's lunch doesn't that <laughs> look so pretty and it's not even cooked yet so cooking you want your oven really hot for this recipe it's gonna be at 450 so before you do all this make sure you do preheat at 450 put it on the middle rack and make sure to one mistake, there's only really one mistake you can make with this easy recipe, is if you put too many beans, too thick, you don't want it to fall taller than an inch. If it's too many beans, the beans won't cook all the way and you'll have hard beans. So you could blanch your beans if you wanted to ahead of time, but just keep it about an inch thick and you should be fine. So from here, we put it in the oven and then you want to see the magic trick? I have one already in here. Yeah. Of course yeah. I do, right? <laughs> All right. And I covered it because we're warming it up, but do not cover it when you put your sheet pan in there because you want it to crisp on the top. Ooh, it's hot. So you can see this is a little bigger pan and it's got a little bit of a glaze on it from that and it just looks so good everything is nice and tender and it's absolutely delicious your family will eat it everyone in my family likes this recipe it's like a go-to recipe so there's your easy sheep pan pork recipe with apple now we have thank you we have several more recipes for you what time are we at man i was flying so look 15 minutes I mean, I have this stuff pre-measured. You could have a whole meal prepared, okay? So I want to show you while that's cooking, it takes about 20 minutes in the oven for that recipe. While that's cooking, here's what you can do next. And this is even easier. So let me put this down. Clear this out. All right, how many of you have heard of a butter board? Nobody. Wow, I get to teach you something new. Okay. All right, so how many of you have heard of a charcuterie board? All right, everybody's heard of that, right? But they take a while to prepare, don't they? Because you want it to look really pretty. Anybody a perfectionist in this room other than me? Okay, a few of you. Thank you for raising your hand and admitting to it. I am too. Anyhow, so a charcuterie takes a long time. A butter board doesn't. And I'm going to show you what it is and how to make it and why it's amazing. Okay, so first of all, you need a board. <laughs> so I have a board here. It's a smaller board. It's, it's got slate on it. You don't have to have this kind. It could just be a regular cutting board. Or if you have something fancy like a marble board, that would be fine. You really don't need one much bigger than this. This is, I don't know, maybe eight by six. So you don't need much bigger than that. So let me show you what you do. You're going to take a really good unsalted butter. That's the key word there, unsalted. Uh, and the one that I choose 
And I really love this butter if you haven't tried it. It's a uh, Pugra. Have you guys tried this butter before? It's a little more expensive, but I'll tell you this, this one has such a great flavor. It's great for those who do baking because it gives you that light flaky crust. So you're just simply gonna take butter that you let out and to soften. So this has been out since this morning at 5 a.m. Hopefully it's soft enough. If I can get it open. I'm probably only gonna use a, cut out half of it, but so I'm just gonna cut this in half. Yeah, it's kind of soft. It probably could have been left out another hour just to get softer. But you're going to take your butter, and I'm going to have to break it up, but you're going to spread it all over your, your pan here, or your board. Yeah, it's still a little hard. That's okay. We can smush it like Play-Doh. You improvise when you're doing a cooking show. How many of you have done a cooking show before? Nobody? Me either. <laughs> but I'm up here, and I'm doing it. We're having a good time, right? I'm glad you guys stayed. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes? Good. So I'm trying to mash them out. It's much easier if it was softer. But your goal here is to basically ice your butter board. Okay? So I'm going to use the other half. Might as well. Yeah. It's hard. It'll look cool. All right. We just want to get it spread out so I can demonstrate. But if you're fancy like me, I like it a little softer and then I use an icing spatula and you can make all kinds of beautiful designs on it if you want to be extra. So I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Okay, we got it mashed enough, but ideally I would like it softer. So let me show you what you're gonna do. Visually, I'm gonna divide my butter board in thirds. I'll just draw some lines here, okay? And I'm going to make three different butters. The first one I'm gonna make is a cheesy bacon butter. So let me get my stuff together for that. I think I put them in here. There we go. All right, we got all our stuff. Okay, so I've got some fresh, uh, uh, this is Colby Jack cheese that I used. You could literally use any cheese you would like. I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this cheese on top of the butter. You don't know goodness until you have butter and cheese together. <laughs> All right, so we got the cheese. And then I'm gonna take, I have some bacon bits and these are actually real bacon that has been fried and everything and then dried. I'm just gonna take some of those and just sprinkle a little bit on there. Put that back on there, there we go. All right, and then you can use any salt from our collection to put on that. The, the one I like to use is my maple bacon salt. Super good. You can also use the smoke salt on that one. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of this just to give it some flavor. Okay, so that, that side's done. That's it. That was way easier than charcuterie. So we're going to go to the next one. In the middle here, I'm going to do a French onion butter. So I've got some red onions that I've already chopped up. And I'm just going to put a few of those on there. If you're not an onion lover, you don't have to do this one but I love onions. How many of you like onions? Oh, I've got the best crowd. You guys are like, heck yeah, onions. I'm getting some of them over here. There we go. Okay, there's my onions. And then I also have some of those chives. I like to add those. Doesn't that look kind of pretty? Just like that, are you guys seeing this? All right, and then, the salt I like to use is my French garden. I know we keep coming back to this one, but it's so versatile. So let's open this guy up. This is rosemary, lemon, and garlic. Brand new one, too. I may need your help, man. Oh, wait, I got it. 
I don't want to take my gloves off here. All right, here we go. That's my sister sitting over there filming. Oh, yeah, that looks good. You just need a little bit to just add pop, because remember, we used unsalted butter. That's important, otherwise you'll be over-salted if you, if you use the salted butter. The last one, I'm gonna make kind of a desserty salt. So I've got some fresh ground cinnamon. I love cinnamon, it's so delicious. Okay, we got our cinnamon, and then I've got a honey bear over here. I'm gonna sprinkle some, or drizzle some honey on it. There's some beautiful honey. Now, which salt do you think I'm gonna use on that? How many of you know my salt? Vanya <laughs> knows. All right, it's right up here. This is our vanilla delight salt. It's a bourbon vanilla bean salt. It is so delicious. So I'm just gonna put a pinch of that on top of the honey and the cinnamon butter. Ooh, it's gonna be good. All right. Oh, look at that. Good, right? All right, so guess what? Our butterboard is done. How, how long did that take? <coughs> Five minutes. You have way, way less time than a charcuterie. You know, what do you do with this? You're like, okay, that's great. That's pretty. What do I do with it? You want to serve this with bread or crackers that you can just dip into it. Now, what I'll do if there's a lot of guests, I'll have a little cup of popsicle sticks. So everybody can take a popsicle stick and just put it on there and then you have less less things you have to clean later. Um, here's my favorite cracker that I've really gotten into. If you haven't tried these, and I'm not, uh, they don't pay me to do this, I just like them. Um, this is called Wassa Crackers. Um, what I like about them, it's kind of like, um, uh, what do you call it? The sourdough bread and a cracker got together. And it's just a delicious, delicious cracker. So I'll show you what they look like. into this guy. So they, they look like this. They're really nice big crackers and they don't have a lot of, they don't have any salt on them, number one, which is good because we put salt on this and they, they don't have any other flavoring on them. So that really helps when you're adding so much flavor to your butter board. So this is a great, great uh, appetizer while you're waiting for your pork meal to come up. I hope you enjoyed that. So you can see I made a butter board and then I made our sheet pan recipe. Uh, we did have a few questions. I was having a good time up there. I actually went over. I um, My show, I think, was like, I was supposed to only be 15 minutes and I think it was like 25. But uh, we made it work. But mm -hmm. my son, Jack, he was going to make his cookies. He has his own recipe for these. He calls them blackjack cookies. And they're chocolate cookies with white chocolate chips. And uh, then he dips them in a powdered sugar and puts a little pinch of our bourbon vanilla bean salt. It's on here somewhere. Uh, maybe somebody took it. But he, oh, there it is. I see it. Yeah, so he does a pinch of the bourbon vanilla bean salt on top of the cookies. And they are the bomb. They're the best. I just love them. Uh, but he had to do his presentation much later. They did work him in. That's the good news. The bad news is none of us filmed him or videoed him or got a picture because we didn't know he was already up on stage. And then it was like not too long after wonderful Chef Claudia did her show and we had a line. Like people were coming in, I want the, those salts that Chef Claudia used. <laughs> and so we were just like moving and shaking. Yeah. So it got I, really busy. It did, which is a great thing. Yeah. We're so thankful for yeah. you, our customers, for supporting our small business. So if you're wondering about the recipes, I have included links down below in the comments in the show notes to the recipe cards for all of the recipes. I'll also include them at the end of this video. If you want to pause the video, you'll see them there. So you can take a screenshot if, if you can't for some reason click on the links. So I, I really had a great time at the show. I hope we can do it again next year. Yes, that would be awesome. And I'll have something different next year. We'll yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, for, well, obviously, for sure. Huh? Yeah, we yeah. want to do the same thing. No, we're gonna do something <laughs> different every time. Keep them on edge. <laughs> I know. Right. right. Thanks thank again you. for being on our show, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Thank you.
Thank you for being here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so we can keep bringing you some great content in the future.